Hi everybody, welcome again to Dr. Manny's YouTube Learn Shops. In this session we'll be looking at leadership, specifically leadership in nursing. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you're a leader. John Quincy Adams, a famous American president. So the learning objectives for this session are to be able to explain the concept of leadership, discuss the styles of leadership, review theories of leadership, explain mentoring, because that's an important component for leadership, and explain the concept of role modeling, also an important component for leadership. Think, what do you understand by the term leadership or leader. Simply, leadership is the art of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a common goal. A process where an individual influences a group of individuals to achieve a common goal. Who's a leader? Well, a leader is a person in that group who's got a combination of personality and leadership skills that make others want to follow them, whether it's a his or a her, male or female, at their direction. Is leadership important? Well, yeah, it is. It initiates action, inspires, motivates, guides, creates confidence, it coordinates, and it helps with effective planning. What do you consider a good leadership or positive leadership qualities or attributes? Think about it. Well, leadership attributes can be integrity having clear goals, setting a good example, role modeling, having a vision, effective communication, always expecting the best, having high standards, supportive of the team, providing encouragement and recognizing the work that the team does, providing stimulating work. And the focus is always on the team, their interests and their needs. And therefore, you inspire. That's a good leader. So good leadership qualities can include being kind. When someone makes a mistake, you're not punished. They help people who are in trouble. They come up with solutions. They're not violent. They're generous, honest. They don't waste. They're good listeners. They work within a team. They try to make their people better. They're intelligent. They always try their best. They're not afraid of making mistakes. That's learning. That's experience. They protect the community and they use their time well. They're proactive. They're not procrastinators. So what do you consider a bad or negative leadership attributes? Well, bad leader qualities can include being violent, stealing, not physical things, but ideas. They don't protect other people. They only care about themselves. They lie, they're rude. They order people around. They blame other people for their mistakes. They don't protect the environment. They're selfish. They aren't good problem solvers. They don't like to listen. They don't want to look bad. They're not smart. They only work by themselves. They're time wasters. They make other people feel bad. They're not leaders. So leadership factors can include four main elements. The follower, the leader, communication and the situation. Followers are the actual persons who implement the ideas and the strategies of the leader. They assist and facilitate the leader to increase effectiveness, 
in the functioning of the organisation. They're loyal to the leaders and honest in their actions towards the organisation. The leader sets a clear vision for the organisation and leads by example, role modelling. They motivate and guide employees through the work process and build morale. They're helpful. Then there's communication. Leadership communication consists of those messages from the leader that are rooted in the value and culture of the organization's values, their mission, their vision. It's two-way and mainly non-verbal and a form of role modeling. The manner of communication either builds trust or creates harm. Then you've got the situation. All situations are different. What's done in one situation may be different in another. For example, in a university, a lecturer may confront a student for failure to submit work on time. But if the confrontation is late or early, harsh or weak, the outcome may prove to be ineffective. So let's have a reflective activity. Look at the pictures or just consider, do you admire any leaders? And if you do, why? What have they done that inspires you to do what you do? There are basically three leadership styles, autocratic, participatory, and free reign, or laissez-faire. When you look at the first one, autocratic, this is authoritarian. This is a leadership style characterized by an individual who controls all decisions, and there's very little input from the group members. Autocratic leaders typically make choices based on their ideas and judgments and rarely accept advice from followers. Do it my way or no way. Then you've got democratic. Democratic or participatory. And this is where individuals who will typically be considered unequal by hierarchical standards that have shared power in making decisions. Democratic leaders emphasize collaboration and free flow of ideas. What do you think we should do? Everybody has a say. Then you've got delegated, free reign, or referred to as laissez-faire. And this is typically a leadership style in which the leaders are hands-off and they allow the group members to make the decisions. Researchers, however, have found that this leadership style, leadership style leads to the lowest productivity amongst the group members. Just do what you want to do. Are there differences between being the boss or being a leader? Well, the boss is demanding, the leader coaches. The boss relies on authority, the leader relies on goodwill. The boss issues ultimate, ultimate ultimations, the leader generates enthusiasm. The boss says I, the leader says we. The boss uses people, the leader develops people. The boss takes credit, the leader gives credit. The boss places the blame, the leader accepts blame. The boss says go, the leader says let's go. The boss says my way is the only way, the leader says look, team strength is unity. So what are some of the leadership theories? You've got the great man theory, trait theory, behavioral theories, contingency theories, charismatic leadership theory, transactional leadership theory, and transformational leadership theory. But there are others as well. These are just some of the main ones. In great man theory, leaders are exceptional people and they're born with innate qualities and they're destined to lead. The term man was patriarchal and intentional a long, long time ago. But great man theory says, it's a hero who accomplishes goals against all odds for his followers. Then you've got trait theories. 
and this evolved from the great man theory that leaders are born and due to this belief those who possess these sorts of qualities the correct qualities and traits are better better suited for leadership this theory often identifies with behavioral characteristics that are common in leaders examples of these traits include intelligence self-confidence integrity and determination and motivation leadership traits and skills are that the traits are that you're adaptable to situations ambitious assertive cooperative decisive dependable dominant energetic persistent self-confident you assume responsibility the skills that you're clever conceptually skilled creative diplomatic and tactful fluent in speaking you can communicate you're knowledgeable organized persuasive and socially skilled behavioral theory it's another theory of leadership and it's a really big leap from trait theory which means it's very very different it assumes that leadership capability can be learned by teaching and by observation rather than being inherent and it's based on the principle that behaviors can be conditioned and great leaders are made not born and these can include people like Albert Einstein Oprah Winfrey Walt Disney then you've got charismatic theory charismatic lead leadership is a trait based leadership theory which emphasizes the leaders ability to convince followers to walk to work towards a specific vision and this can reach real greatness through successfully driving change and improvement in difficult situations examples can be Martin Luther King Mahatma Gandhi Winston Churchill and Nelson Mandela then you've got transactional theory which is first described by Max Weber in 1947 and a transactional leader is someone who values order structure and many high-level members of the military or chief executive officers of now large international companies the National Football League coaches in the United States of America these are all considered to be transactional leaders they value order and structure then you've got transformational theory and this is a theory of leadership where the leader works with teams to identify needed change they create a vision to guide the change through inspiration and it's the leaders who inspire the individuals through trust and encourage creativity and personal growth individuals develop a sense of purpose to benefit the group organization or society without thoughts of self-interest or reward So what do you understand then by following leadership principles? Think about it. Well, leadership principles are basically involved with knowing yourself and seeking your self-improvement. Being technically proficient, seeking responsibility and taking responsibility for your actions. Making sound and timely decisions, set an example know your staff colleagues and look out for their well-being keep your staff informed and develop a sense of responsibility in your staff ensure tasks are understood supervised and accomplished and train the staff as a team and use all the resources that your organization offers Another important element of leadership is mentoring. So what do you understand about mentoring? What's a mentor? Well, mentorship is a long term supportive and protective relationship. And this is established between two individuals where knowledge, skills and experiences are shared 
and results are measured in terms of competence that is gained. So what's a mentor then? That's a person who's got expertise in the areas of need that are identified by the mentee and they are willing and able to share their wisdom in a supportive way. What's a mentee then? A mentee is someone who seeks guidance in developing specific competencies, self-awareness and skills. So what are some of the attributes of a good mentor? They're a patient listener. They're available and responsive. They inspire trust through words and actions. They respect confidentiality. They give advice and share experiences without forcing it onto the mentee. They encourage independence and demonstrate confidence to the mentee and they don't deny their own ignorance. They don't know everything. What are good mentee attributes then? Well, a good mentee always asks questions and learns from mistakes. They accept responsibility and they accept criticism, constructive criticism, graciously. They consider the mentor's time because they're busy too. They're always appreciative of the mentor's time and advice. They demonstrate and strive for excellence and they contribute to personal knowledge and skills to whatever company, knowledge base or system that they're associated with. So are preceptors then and mentors the same thing? Because you can have preceptors and you can have mentors. Well, a mentor or mentorship occurs over a period of time. There's no termination date. A mentee looks for a mentor. A mentor teaches and networks. They share their personal experiences and sometimes they're personal to highlight the point. Mentoring relationships can be personal, academic or work related but they're usually long-term. If you're a preceptor, it's got a set time limit. There's a termination date. It's typically assigned, and it's usually associated with formal orientation. It can assist in tuning or fine-tuning skills, and it offers suggestions. And typically, it's work-related. Role modelling is another element related to leadership. So, do you have a role model? And if you do, why do you consider them a role model? What is a role model? What is role modelling? Well, a role model is an individual who's looked up to and someone who's revered by someone else someone who other individuals aspire to be like, either in the present or in the future. A role model possesses the qualities that we would like to have, and those who have affected us in some way to make us want to be a better person, a better nurse, a better human being. What are some of the negative role model attributes? Well, you make derogatory comments. You've got inappropriate humour. You're unfriendly. You complain all the time. You're angry and frustrated. You're a cynic and bitter. You're opinionated. You lack confidence. You're very uncooperative. And in your clinical situation, you don't really have the knowledge. In teaching abilities, you forget names and faces. You provide unconstructive criticism. You frighten the person or you humiliate them. You promote unnecessary competition. What are positive attributes? You take an interest in people. You spend time with people. You're enthusiastic, patient. You give clear explanations. 
you're versatile. You focus on learner-centered style teaching. You give constructive feedback. You demonstrate clinical reasoning, theory and practice. You facilitate patient interaction and learning opportunities. You identify opportunities for reflection. What are some of the strategies that we can employ to be a positive role model? Body language is really important. So consider your body language, facial expressions, eye contact, smile, be friendly and introduce yourself. Show enthusiasm for the nursing profession. Don't denigrate it. Discuss nursing in a positive light. Provide the patient with quality care and encourage the student to do the same. Always offer constructive criticism and feedback. A great leader is not necessarily the one who does the greatest things. He or she is the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. Ronald Reagan, United States of America, President. A very positive leader. Everyone in society should be a role model, not only for their own self-respect, but for the respect from others. Thanks again. If you've enjoyed this session and got something out of it, consider looking at some of the other Dr. Many Learn Shops on YouTube. They're for you.